Okay, you guys, morning. It's Rhonda from Beach Life. Um, I wanted to talk to you this morning about something a little bit more serious, um, but joyous. Um, once again, this is Brenda from Beach Life, and um, I want to talk to you about what it's like to be told you're dying. Um, just over two years ago, um, I had a doctor tell me that I would not be here in two years. Um, my health was really poor. My organs were doing some really crazy and obnoxious things. Um, I do have lupus. Um, and things weren't looking real great. Um, so my husband and I ended up moving from the Midwest to the East Coast um, to do some life changes um, to help improve my health. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so how does it feel when a doctor tells you you're dying? First off, I want to share with you that I am not afraid of death. Um, death does not scare me. Um, I know that when I leave this earth, I will meet my heavenly father in heaven um, because I have accepted him as my Lord and Savior. That is without a doubt. I do not fear death. What I have a problem with in death is what it does to those left behind. I've had a lot of loss in my life and some harder than others. And some have really left scars in a huge way on me. But that's not really what I want to talk about. What I want to talk about is how you get the wind knocked out of you when you hear that initially. Um, for me, it was kind of like, yeah, okay, I'm dying. Aren't we all? I mean, don't we all come into this world with an expiration stamped upon us? And we do. But sometimes we put our trust in the fact that someone else is telling us we're dying. And for me, personally, it was like, oh my gosh, I've got to get my life in order. Like, there's things I need to get done. I can't just leave this earth and leave things unfinished. And you do, I, I mean, I did, I went through this whole like, okay, got to get everything in order. There were certain things I did get in order. Um, my final wishes, my husband and I have both put that in writing. Um, we, I, I, <laughs> I took a note from um, Dad Wills and made a file of all the things that I want, you know, like upon my death type file, um, all our account numbers, um, life insurance policies, uh, all our bills, all our account numbers for those bills, how to pay them, um, because my husband doesn't do any of that. So that file's basically for him so that he can know what to do when I take my last breath. Um, but then there's the, oh my gosh, what if somebody comes into my house because I've died and it looks like this, unorganized, messy, ugh, I don't think so. Um, then you go through this, but I feel great when you really don't feel great. Um, then there's your list. Your list of things that you've always, always wanted to do. Um, some of that for me is not only do I have lupus and all these other issues, but I also tend to be claustrophobic 
and asthmatic. Put the two together, not a pretty picture. But um, I really started practicing relaxation methods, um, researching them and pra literally, literally practicing relaxation methods. Um, because I tend to be one of those totally engaged all the time type people. Always have my phone in my hand, always have my iPad going, something. I'm always engaged. So I had to learn to do some relaxation methods. So for me, a aha moment for me was last summer. I think it was last summer. Um, my daughter, her boyfriend, my husband and I went and climbed a lighthouse. Um, never in my wildest dreams did I think I'd do it because of being claustrophobic and asthmatic. It's not like a lighthouse is air conditioned by any means. Um, and it gets narrower the higher you get. So everybody was a little concerned about me going ahead and doing this. And I'm like, no, I've got this. I've been practicing relaxation methods. And guess what? The top, the view from the top was one I will remember the rest of my life. One, because it means I made it. Two, because it was just so spectacular um, as a whole. But you do. You start going through your list. List of things you want to do before you die. But here's the big point of my video. Yeah, I got a little teary-eyed. Um, is we're all dying, folks. We are all dying. You are given the breath you're in. That's the only one you're really guaranteed. So, because you're currently taking it. So get your life in order now. I mean, whatever that means to you, get it, get it in order. Do what you want to do as if you were dying, because guess what? You are. Um, go climb a mountain, go camping, go fish, whatever it is you would want to do. Go do it. Life is short. Get your life in order. Get your, get your upon my death folder in order if that's what you want. But here's another thing. If it taught me anything else to hear that I'm dying, it is taught me to love differently. Before I used to love um, the way I wanted to love people, but not everybody needs love the same way or the same type of love and respect. So I really had to learn that there was a difference there. Um, but there is. And the way I was loving was very, I guess, selfish because it, it was loving my way and not their way. Um, I know that doesn't make much sense. And I'm not sure how to explain it, but I'll use a little example, but it's not quite the same. My example is this, your children, if you have children, I personally have four. Not one of them is the same, let me tell you. And they all need their mom differently, absolutely differently. Some of them um, I can talk to every day. Some of them I don't hear from but once a month, twice a month maybe. Um, but that's because they're different and their personalities are different. So just as you say that, it's the same concept with loving them. You love them all very much, but you love them differently. You love them for different reasons, not just because they're your child. 
You love them because of who they are, who they become, how they love. I mean, it's just, I don't know. It's an odd concept. And if I can come up with a better way of explaining to stop loving people the way you want to love them, but rather the way they need to be loved, I will. Um, I guess part of it is too, I think his name is Gary Chapman, has a book, The Five Love Languages. And I think it's really focused about your spouse or significant other, but it's very helpful and it, it does give some definition to loving people the way they need to be loved. Um, so yeah, there's that. It also helps when you hear you're dying to appreciate things, life. I get up, I go to work six days a week. I have thought that, hmm, maybe I shouldn't work six days a week. You know, I am dying after all. But dying means living. I'm going to say that again. Dying means living, living in the moment, living for right now, living for yourself, living for joy, living for peace. Dying means living. The other thing is that I want to share, and it's the very last thing I promise, I know this video is kind of long, is... Every moment of every day is about making a memory. That's right, making a memory. When you're told you're dying, <clears throat> making a memory is so important. It's obviously not about making a memory just for you, but it's about making a memory for those around you. Making the best of a situation making the best of a day, the best of a, um, a moment. And it all kind of ties in with the loving people the way they need to be loved. But we have an opportunity to truly make memories. Laugh. Who cares who's watching? Laugh, smile, be happy, act silly sometimes. Do what you're supposed to do, but enjoy it. So here's what I'm going to ask of you. <clears throat> if you've actually stayed and watched this whole video, leave in the comments below how you're going to go make a memory today. Just one little comment or maybe some of your best memories. Or, or... How are you going to love someone today? Their way. Okay, guys. Obviously, I am still living. Um, the doctor that told me I wouldn't be here in a couple of years was wrong. Um, because according to him, I shouldn't have been here come March. Since I've moved, my health... Uh, I mean, it's good. It, it's it's not horrible. Um it has stabilized some. My organ functions numbers haven't changed too much. Um, and I'm loving life. And that's what basically being told you're dying is about. Loving life. Loving people. So go make a memory and love somebody their way today. All right. Peace out, guys. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I will be doing a mid mud budget, blah, mid May budget update in a couple of weeks. And have a great day. Bye.